thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Uh, before explaining about EcoAlf, um, I always like to give a few notes about what's going on in the waste in the world. No? I think sometimes we're not aware of what's going on, and the problem is much bigger than we can imagine. No? Over 500,000 million plastic bags used every year, unfortunately, with a spam life of less than 30 minutes. More than 650,000 tons of discarded fishing nets in the bottom of the ocean. People are not aware, but this is a huge problem, no? especially because a lot of those nets are made of nylon 6, which is the best quality polyamide you can get in the world, and it can take centuries to disappear, creating a lot of impact in the marine life. You will see that EcoAlf, as the years go past, we've been more and more focused in the ocean. No? We feel our oceans are clean. I'm Spanish. I live around the ocean. Our oceans are not clean. In fact, the bottom of the oceans are very dirty. Unfortunately, when a plastic bottle doesn't have a cup, full of water goes down. Aluminum can full of water goes down. So it's much more dirty than we can imagine. This, I always put it on because it was in a trip a few years ago in India, going to visit some natural dye factories. No? And from Bangalore to these factories, I was surrounded by waste. We might think that waste is going to disappear. That waste is not going to disappear. Okay, unfortunately, our granddaughters Grandsons will see that waste. And the problem is that where people see waste, they throw more waste. So the problem is getting worse and worse. And this, I always put it because I received a phone call from a lawyer of the plastic industry from Brussels saying, Javier, you, you speak very bad about plastic. I said, that, that's not true. And that's not true, sincerely. I'm a big fan of plastic. I'm a big fan of plastic. We have to do a prosthesis which has to last 40 years. I'm a big fan of plastic. You have to do a window which has to last 40 years. What I don't understand is why we take the natural peeling of our fruit and put it inside plastic containers. And unfortunately, a lot of those plastic containers finish in the ocean. You've probably heard about the guar in the Pacific. The first was one, then it was three, then it was five, then it was seven. I had the opportunity to see one near Thailand, which wasn't very big. It was like four miles by seven. Fishermen said that it comes and disappears. You could see it for 10 days. It would disappear for three months. This was quite strange because it was like a carpet. So we felt that you could walk on top of it, no? Normally, that's not the reality. The reality is that most of that plastic is microplastic. And the problem with that microplastic is that fish are eating it. No? This is a study by Ellen MacArthur Foundation 2018. One out of every three fish ready to be eaten had microplastics inside. And this is six years ago, okay? They claim that in 2050, there will be more plastic than fish in the ocean. I say that there's already much more plastic than fish in the ocean. It depends what you call plastic. If you call plastic only a bottle of two liters, perhaps not. But if you call plastic every tiny little bit, there's much more. And the problem is that there's not going to be enough money, resources, time, energy to take that away from the ocean. This is a problem which is getting worse and worse. No? Um, we're working now with an Italian explorer who is doing the eight most polluted rivers in Southeast Asia. And it's unbelievable. I mean, he cannot advance with his canoe. This is something with, this is rivers in Malaysia, India, China, Philippines, places, rivers that go along hundreds of villages. We've given them the containers, but we haven't given them the truck to collect those containers. So who's collecting all those containers? The river. The rivers are throwing tons of waste every minute to the ocean. But I wonder, you don't have to go to Southeast Asia. You have it here in Sidon. 48 kilometers outside from Beirut, no? Place where they've been bombing for the last decades. A lot of waste near the ocean. Every time the wind blows, it goes directly to the ocean. Or you see it in Italy, in front of the coast of Messina, probably the biggest wasteland you can find in the ocean, no? For decades, the people in charge of throwing the waste, of managing the waste, instead of managing, they've been throwing it to the ocean, basically la mafia, and you can find anything you want. So this is a huge disaster, no? Or Hawaii. Unfortunately, they claim this is happening twice per month. Before, it was once or twice per year. Or you can go to the Atlantic. Somebody thought it was an incredible place to throw seven kilometers of tires to the ocean. I mean, unfortunately, now, it seems that if we're going to be 15 minutes, there will be 15 more trucks of 16 tons dumped into the ocean. There's a truck of 16 tons dumped into the ocean every minute. So, till when? We don't know. Till when is the ocean going to support this? We don't know. I don't know if it's 50 more years or 40 or 65, but there's going to be a moment where the ocean is going to say, enough, no more space. When I tell you about EcoAlf, EcoAlf was born in 2009. I wanted to create a sustainable fashion company. 
I believe the most sustainable thing to do was not to keep on using natural resources. So recycling could be a solution. If we're able to make like a new generation of clothes where if I don't tell you to recycle, you would never know, no? Basically, the fashion industry, it's a beautiful industry, but normally one of the most polluted. We're normally podium or bronze or silver. It depends how you measure in terms of usage of water, carbon emissions, etc. No, it's a very polluted industry. Why? Well, I, because in my opinion, it has been managed over the last decades by a business model which doesn't work. It's about buying, throwing, buying, throwing, a new trend every Thursday, discount, promotion, Black Friday. This is creating billions of garments going to landfill every year. Look, there was an article a few months ago, very sad article, no? It was the biggest cotton company in the world, burning 4,000 acres of forest in Ethiopia to plant cotton. So we're burning the forest to plant cotton, to make t-shirts of five euros, which are going to finish in 75% in a landfill in less than two years. And each of those t-shirts takes 1,600 liters of water. There's not going to be enough forest, there's not going to be enough water, and there's definitely not going to be enough landfills to throw everything we're using. Okay? So, um, well, this, as I said, was our mission, create this new generation of recycled products without using any more natural resources. This is the purpose of the company, which was written in 2010 and hasn't changed a comma. It's probably the thing I'm most proud of. Okay. So, as I said, we launched it in 2010. Uh, finally, when I went to the market in 2009, there were no cool recycled fabrics, so we had to start developing fabrics. We started with an amazing woman south of Taichung, which was recycling plastic bottles to create carpets. With them, we did the first fabric. Since then, we have developed, I think we're in fabric 638. We develop around 30 fabrics per season. Uh, we recycle plastic bottles, fishing nets, used tires, coffee, cotton, wool, cashmere, many different materials. Okay? Basically, from plastic bottles, probably nearly to 250 different 100% recycled fabrics. Normally, we need like 70 plastic bottles per every yard of fabric we produce. Okay? Right now, the company, well, the next collection is already 74% monofilament. This is very important, no? because everybody talks about circularity, circularity. Circular. Well, the problem is that, unfortunately, most of the garments that go into landfill are not able to be circular. Why? Because they're not monofilament. So at the end, you're mixing cotton with polyester, etc. And at the end, what you do is a, re as a chemical recycling, which the fiber resultant is worthless for the moment. Okay, so this is probably one of the hardest things we're working. Huge effort for the designing teams to be able to have nowadays 74% of the collection ready to be recycled. Okay, fishing nets. So as to you to get an idea, from an old fishing net to one of these garments, to one of these fabrics, it would be seven chemical steps. From petrol to make that same fabric, it would be 17 chemical steps. That's why there's so much safe in water, energy, and emissions. All the new sports collection is made with not only monofilament nylon, but also with this new filament, which practically uh, throws zero microfilaments back into the system. Okay? If you know a normal polar fleece, which is a broken filament, throws around 20,000 microfilaments every time you wash it, the, the polar fleece of this collection throws 0 0.007. Okay, used tires. This was the first project I did in Spain. I wanted to make the outsoles of our shoes. Finally, we decided to do this flip-flop collection, which looks like a very simple product, but has received a lot of innovation pro, um, prices. I don't know if you've seen a tire inside, but it's full of metal, oxidants, textiles. Well, we, we convert it into powder, and everything is mixed by heat. There's no conglomerates, no glue, no nothing. And coffee, we started recycling with a partner coffee in 2014. Basically, we let, get the leftovers from the cafeterias, we get the humid compound, we dry it, we mix it with plastic um, polymers, and we make huge fabrics, which have a lot of natural properties. Fast drying, odor control, UV protection. Most of our linings in our shoes now are all made with um, coffee origin fabrics. And cotton. Well, cotton, people are not aware, but cotton has a huge problem. It's very intensive in water. I don't know if you've seen the, the film about the RLC of Isabel Coisset, but when the Russians had to give water to the cotton plantations in Kazakhstan, it dried out in less than two years. So it's a big problem, no? We started in 2013 with 10% recycled cotton, 20, 30, 40, 50. And two years ago, we launched the first collection, 100% recycled cotton, which is able to be recycled twice. The third time, the fiber is no good. Okay. 
And this is wool and cashmere, which has been recycled for the last century. There's a city in Italy called Prato, which is very famous for doing this. Okay? Uh, we also use new fabrics. I think they are here also. I saw the stand. So we use new generation of materials, like we try to use hemp, which is much better than cotton in terms of usage of water. This is a substitute of leather made from pineapple leaves. Kapok comes from a dead fruit in India. I mean, all different materials. Okay? This is our new um, premium line, which is all the latest in technology. Upcycling the oceans, this is probably the project I'm most proud of. And we started at the end of 2014. We, we, were, we had been recycling fishing nets for many years. And one day, talking with a fisherman, he said, Javier, you should come out and fish with me and see how much waste gets caught in the nets every time we go fishing. So I went out fishing with him, and it's true. Unfortunately, every time they pull up the nets, mix with the fish, there's a lot of waste. So we decided to start a project. We convinced three fishermen from a little port in Spain called Villa Joyosa in Alicante to let us put a little container. And all that waste that got collected, instead of throwing it back to the ocean, put it in the container and take it back to the port. Um, and then we would collect them every week and take them to categorization plants to separate the poly polypropylene, polyethylene, the glass, the aluminum, the shoe, whatever. No? And convert it into polymer flake polymer yarn uh, fabric and product in less than 300 kilometers. Because eco -Elf never moves the waste. So if we recycle the cotton in Portugal, we will make the final jacket in Portugal. If we recycle the used ties in Spain, we will make the flip-flop in Spain. Okay? What started with three fishermen, now we have programmed in, um, now it's the sixth country because we started in Egypt, but we're in 79 ports. Okay? We are in 42 ports in Spain, 12 in France, 16 in Greece, three in Egypt, Italy, etc., working with over 6,000 fishermen and collecting around 500 tons of waste from the bottom of the ocean every year. Of those 500 tons of waste from the bottom of the ocean, not from the beaches, we're reusing 68% of all that waste. Unfortunately, there's 32% which has to go into landfill. Okay? This was one of the first products we did with all the waste from the bottom of the ocean. This is 100% polyester from the plastic bottles we get from the ocean. Okay? Basically, we are a multi-channel company. We have around 1,800 doors in Europe, which sell Ecoalf. We have our own flagship stores in Spain, uh, Spain, in Tokyo, Milan, another one in Madrid. Okay. This store was quite amazing because this was done with 3.3 tons of waste with um, digital printing. We made this store in 17 days. Working day and night, the digital printings, they made everything from those 3.3 tons of uh, plastic waste. This is the store in Paris, in Le Marais. Okay, this is our claim because there's no planet B, which we registered in 2013, which a lot of people use. We're very happy everybody uses it, but um, it's been registered in 47 countries. We are B Corp since 2018, and from three years ago, we were reevaluated in B Corp and we are now one of the 5% best B Corps in the world by punctuation. And we're also GRS standard, which means all our supply chain has total traceability, from the waste to the final product. All our supply chain has to be GRS. And just to finish, which I'm just in time, I'm going to put a video which summarizes what is EcoAlf, what we do, and where we're going.
Thank you. Thank you.